Welcome to Half the Battle! And welcome to another summer of small vehicles and playsets. And we're starting with a bang, something of a treat. We're taking a look at the original Fang. So meet the Cobra Fang. This vehicle was released in 1983 with all original parts. And there's two main things about this vehicle I'm gonna mention straight at the start. It looks awesome and it's fragile as hell. Oh, we'll get to the fragility, but let's focus on the rest first. The look is iconic. Together with the His Tank released in the same year and the Stinger Jeep released a year later, these defined what early Cobra vehicles were all about. Now, as great as I think the Fang looks, I have to admit it only looks great as a toy, or as something in a cartoon or comic. There it looks menacing. In real life, however, well... It is sort of based on a real vehicle, like the one you see in the James Bond film You Only Live Twice, and not even the world's greatest spy can make that thing look cool. Still, as a Cobra vehicle, it kicks ass and is stuffed with fun. The blades can move, as can the back rotor, and it's got four missiles and a bomb underneath. The best feature for me, though? Well, that's the laser gun on the front that's on a ball joint, so it can move in a wide variety of directions without having to move the fang itself. It's a neat design that, on the one hand, I wish they'd used more for Cobra vehicles, but on the other hand, it's nice that it makes the fang more unique by only using it here. Speaking of the armaments... While four missiles and a bomb are great, that does mean you've got five easy-to-lose pieces. Still, they all snap tightly on the pegs, so there's less danger having them accidentally fall off. What there is more danger of, however, is damaging the thing. Like I said at the beginning, it's fragile. The blades can get loose and wobbly, or even break off, and the ball joint gun can lose its stiffness over time. Rarer, but still a problem, is that the landing struts can break, like they did on the one from my childhood, and I had to glue them back on. The worst part about the fang, though? The one that's an absolute bastard is the little red piece of plastic over the engine. These bars not only easily come off, but they break even more frequently. So, if you find a fang on the secondary market, chances are this little piece will be missing, presumed dead. And the stupid thing is, it's a dunce hole. It has no function and no reason to be there. Sure, it makes the toy look a little bit better, but they could have just made it part of the body mold. It would still look fine in black. Hell, they fixed this on the 2020 classic version where they did just that. As it stands, it only serves to frustrate collectors who want a mint complete fang. But those are just about all the negative things I can say about the thing, though. So now I want to sing its praises some more. There's some nice detailing to find here. The engine looks great, and there's even molded rivets all over the bodywork. The finishing touches are, of course, the stickers, and they add a lot to the look, especially the Cobra stickers and the dashboard one. There's room for three figures. Though it does look best when there's just one, namely the pilot, because if you use the foot pegs on the landing struts, it ends up looking far too busy and quite a bit silly. In the proud tradition of various G.I. Joe vehicles, the pilot sits there completely unprotected from any oncoming gunfire. In fact, the Fang might just be the thing that started this proud tradition, at least for drivers not having protection they really should have. You could argue there's the HAL from a year earlier, but that's not really a frontline weapon. Overall, the Fang is a great vehicle that's definitely part of Cobra's iconic look. And so it deserves a place of honor in anybody's collection. It's a pity that finding a mint complete one is difficult and or expensive. There were other versions of the Fang, but we'll save those for their own reviews. That means it's time to talk about the character, starting with the file card. Now, normally, this is where you'd see my patented freeze frame gag with the fake file card. But the thing is, the fan actually got one! Okay, so it wasn't for the original, but rather the 2008 modern recreation, but it still counts, so we'll take a look at that. And the first thing to talk about is the name. The Fang. F-A-N-G. It's an acronym, but obviously one they invented after settling on the Fang name. It stands for Fully Armed Negator Gyrocopter. Okay, fully armed, fair enough. And gyrocopter is okay too. But negator is stretching to find a word that fits the name. It just means something that negates or nullifies. Now, about the term gyrocopter. 
For this video, I've avoided calling this toy the Fang Helicopter right up until now, even though that's what most people would call it, since it's called a Gyrocopter on the packaging and that 2008 file card. So what's the difference between a helicopter and a gyrocopter? Heli refers to hell, meaning that a helicopter's flight is powered by the energy of a thousand demons from hell, while a gyrocopter achieves flight by the power of a thousand Greek sandwiches. Okay, so none of that is true or even plausible. Basically, a helicopter uses an engine to power the rotor, while a gyrocopter uses airflow to make the rotor move. The difference isn't important enough, narratively anyway, to not call this the Fang Helicopter. Technical inaccuracies be damned! The card itself describes the Fang as a hummingbird with a bad attitude. Okay, now I am mentioning BA as a hummingbird. It goes on to say that it packs quite a punch for its size, and they even give an explanation for the open cockpit, saying that yes, this leaves the pilot vulnerable, but, but, it allows him to see more of the target or the battlefield. Yeah, must be nice to see all those bullets coming at your unprotected ass. The card concludes they are used to pester the enemy with nuisance fire or as part of a larger air attack with bigger aircraft. Kinda underselling the fang there, but I can understand, not every vehicle needs to be the main and most important asset in a battle. There is an error on this card claiming it has a rear mounted cannon, while it's clearly on the front. There's a second file card, um, sort of. As the Fang was featured in the Order of Battle comic series, which reprinted file cards, but also had entries for some of the vehicles. There's no text on the background of the helicopter there, just technical specifications like weight, speed and range, as well as details on the weapons. It calls the cannon on the front a grenade launcher. I've been saying it's a laser because that's what it was in the cartoon, like every other weapon there. It also identifies the missiles, but neglects to mention the bomb. And if you look at the drawing, it's not there either, so that's an oversight. As a brief aside, as a kid, I never used a bomb as an actual bomb. You know, something that drops straight down. I always used it as just another missile. And I also never put the Cobra stickers on there, because it's a bomb, it's gonna explode. There's no reason for decals to be on there. As far as other media goes, I can be fairly brief. The Fang showed up quite a bit in the comics and especially in the cartoon, but it was obviously never the focus of any story. Still, it was nice to always see them there, attacking the Joes or used to escape from the Joes. In conclusion, the Fang is a great toy, but should be handled with care, and you're lucky to find a mint complete one. I was glad to see it used so extensively in other media, and I'm glad it's back in 2021. Well, I'll see you next time, everybody. And hey, why not like, share, and subscribe if that's your thing?